Well, for those of you who have been following along on the rebuild of this mud wagon, you know it's been a real puzzle and it's been a fair bit of challenge. Well, this week I'm going to share with you some of the struggles I'm having with finishing this coach. Well, I had enough irons to know how these seats were fastened to the body of this coach. And I made the risers for them last week. I'm going to get them assembled and put them in position to where I think they belong on this body. But once we get past this point, we're kind of entering into the realm of the unknown. Well, with the sides of these seats on, now I can kind of measure what I want here. This is the one piece of wood that was bolted on top of one of these seat irons. And I'm thinking the front to back frame probably set out past this remaining piece of wood. So this would be a framed seat and then the insets probably has some panels into it. So I'm guessing the external frame is sitting out in here somewhere. And if I just measure between these two luggage boot irons, I have about four feet, just a fuzz over 48 inches. So I'm thinking probably close to somewhere around 46 inch seat base will give us an inch or so clearance on each side of these irons. So I'm thinking maybe 46 inches by 16. So now that I have the irons on for the center seat that's going to be removable, it looks to me like it has to either set right behind this center brace or ahead of this brace. And if it goes ahead, it's going to have to be about so far in order to allow for this bracket. So I'm not sure if that allows enough room here or too much in the back or do I think it'll sit inside. I am second guessing about the curve here that I made it extended on the rear. I may make them both the same. It ends up being it adds another inch and a half on the rear. Well if I were to make these uniform, I can get some adjustments on the front and back seat. I have at the center of the bolt about three inches ahead, center of the iron to the leading edge. And on the back I have four and a half to four and three quarters. Well I could trim this back another inch and a half if I made this uniform. And if this moved back another inch and a half, it's going to give a little more leg room. And that inch and a half just might make all the difference. If I trim this back, it'll open this up a little more, maybe for entry. But again, this seat is going to be movable, so it's going to open up access here anyway. But I am kind of thinking overall appearance from the side. When I have two seats that are going to be facing forward with the back of this riser shaped like so, and then the front seat shaped in reverse, it just doesn't really quite set right with me. If I were to make these uniform, then the front seat and the two rear seats from the side would all look the same even though the seats themselves are going to be different, 
But I'm thinking maybe I might like uniformity in these seat risers rather than what I have right now. And then if I were to do that on this front seat, it would actually allow this front seat perhaps to move another inch and a half back which would open up some leg room, knee room of two passengers that are going to be facing each other. But before I do any of this type of adjustment, I am going to make my seat frames and I can clamp them on with C-clamps. And I would actually like to get in here and set where these seats are going to be and kind of get a feel for my height and stature what all these clearances are going to be like. So I'm going to make the seat frames first.
So in the assortment of irons that came with this pile of junk are these three irons. Now again, I'm going to guess that these two are original. You can see they have long tapered ends on them. 5 16 by 1. This is a quarter by 1. It has a little taper to it on the end, but not like the two that I think are original. And likewise on the bottom, it has a very short, blunt taper, where these other ones have a very nice long taper. So I'm guessing these two are original. This one may have been a, a replacement. This is actually one by one and a quarter, where these other ones are five sixteenths by one. So because these hold the top, I think I'll use these two that are original in my estimation. This quarter by one and a quarter, I think I'll set it aside. These, I think I will make two more. And like I say, I don't have five sixteenths by one. But since these are structural to the top itself in my thinking, I'm going to make the second two out of three eighths by one. In this case, on the heavier side is better. So I'm just going to clip all these bolts off. I'm not going to even worry about trying to save them. estimation these are going to go on the back of the rear seat and the back of the front seat. This will determine the angle of my seat arm and subsequently I think the angle of the seat back. These will be bolted to the seat base to the seat arm and then this portion here will go up to the top itself. But once I get these in position, it'll tell me what my angles are here, and it'll actually begin to tell me what the width of the top bows need to be, because those I have to bend as well. So these seat arms and back are going to set in about like so. Well, I think I'm going to take this chamfer bit and run it this direction instead of this direction. It'll give me a more accurate, nice bevel here. And usually these are done to where they just split and they stop right about where the seam is on this joint. So I'm going to chamfer off this corner around the sides and the back. Well, if there's part of this whole mud wagon restoration process that I have not shown, it has been hours and hours and hours, I don't really know how many hours, that I've stood in front of my stove, enjoying the heat of the wood stove, but pondering and looking at this mud wagon, trying to piece this puzzle together, how was it? Well, we're getting into part of this mud wagon that is non-existent. There were no seats. There was no top. This is all literally flying by the seat of my pants, trying to figure out what would be appropriate. What do I do next? So in my studying the back end of this coach, how it is framed, how these luggage boot irons are built, one thing I've noticed, there is no structural framework that goes to the top, and there has to be. So when I saw these irons and how they angle to fit the side arms of the seat and they're going up, I thought, yep, there's where the top goes. I also took and put these irons this direction and I have a couple of uh, boards in here that I'm going to sit on and, and show you something else here too in a minute. But as I put these irons to the back of the seat, the angle 
here is very common for a seat back iron. If these seats were in fact solid backed, it's possible. You see how they have a nice angle here for the backrest. Very appropriate for a solid back seat. But what puzzles me about this is the placement of the holes. Remove my clamp here. If this sets about so, and there's a hole here and a hole here, why would the hole be through a 5 16 thick seat bottom where there is no support? It's very uncommon for this style to be on a seat back. Normally it would be very short back here, and this hole would be very close to the bend. And that's what gives support to the seat back as an individual leans back against that seat. So this bothered me about being a seat back. It's possible. But if it were to come over here to be a side iron brace for the top, it would have full strength through the framework of this seat frame. But yet this hole is right on top of the riser. So that kind of bothers me. So then the question becomes, do I have something incorrect, perhaps in the width of my seat base? If it was narrower and this all moved in, perhaps another inch, maybe if this was a 44 inch seat base instead of a 46, then my holes would clear my riser. It's possible I misjudged that. That's very possible. Like I say, I'm going by the seat of my pants. I was looking for maximum width within the confines of these irons. An inch would make the difference. Possibly it was a 44 inch seat. Do I remake them all or can I make this work? Were these irons specifically for the sides? Were they for the seat back? Or was it both? It would not be totally out of the question to shorten these up. I could just cut this back two inches, cut these ends off, rejoin it, cut this joint out, save the three other sides and just put another piece. That's not a big deal, that's fixable. If that is the case that this set here instead of here, an inch would make just the right amount of difference. So maybe that's part of the puzzle that I didn't see when I built these. So the next is placement of the seats. I did put boards in each of these so I can get in and set in them to see how they function, how the placement is. And I'm going to do that next just to see where my leg room is. And there's something that someone sent me after they had watched me do the upsetting of the irons on these rear luggage boot, they sent me a stool. They saw me step up on my old stool that has folded up on me before, and if you looked closely, if I showed it to you, you can see where I've welded it. But somebody sent me this little giant step stool. Thank you. Somebody's watching out for my own good when I'm too foolish to watch out for, for myself. Looks like it'd be kind of a handy little stool. Thank you very much. There was no name on it, but appreciate your, your kindness. So as I crawl into this back seat, just the way it is, it's not too bad. The seat back is going to be about so, it's going to be close, but it's doable. If I have to crawl in, it makes me think more that I need to trim this back. And if I cut this back riser back another inch and a half, another inch and a half clearance would be pretty nice. So to move to the next seat up, see how it feels. I think there's gonna be plenty of leg room between the two opposing or facing seats. Now if I were to sit in the front seat facing backwards, I think that would be tolerable for 
both passengers to be facing each other and not be bumping up too bad. So if I did trim this side riser back like so, I could move this back another inch and a half and it would even allow a little more clearance between knocking these between the two seats. So again, going to the back of this coach, the way that I think it has the structure as best I can tell how it was, I couldn't imagine how there was any framework that went from the the main body frame to the top. And that's why when I saw these irons, I thought, aha, these are the irons that would attach the top frame down through the seat, fastened down through this framework, attached pretty solid to the frame, especially since these side irons to the seat risers are bolted right through this frame. I could see a good line of connection strengthwise to the back of this coach. That's where I put these irons as top irons. So then again, if this were a top iron, then it brings up the question, what about this framework here? This framework from the driver's box was not above the seat. This is all I had that was left. I was looking at the picture and thinking, hmm, it's gotta go up to the top. I'll extend this up. Well, if this seat holds the framework iron to the top, this framework here may not be necessary. In fact, if I put a seat base there and a seat back on it, by the time the driver is sitting here, as per the picture, when I was looking at the framework comes up right at the back of the driver, well, if this framework goes up here and this seat back is tapered back, the back of that driver is going to be right up against this framework here as well. So I put this in, it's one of those things that I'm thinking maybe that doesn't need to be there. Which it's easier to take it off if you don't need it than to wish it was there and not have it there. And the other indication what made me believe that there was an iron here that went up to the top frame is in this old original picture, there was the young man standing here with his hand resting about so, which made me think this is an iron that goes to the top. So after actually setting on these seats, I can see that this is probably pretty close to where they would have been. I think there's ample knee room here, but I think I'm gonna trim these off. If I trim this back one off, move it back just a hair, I can see that it would make this more functional. This would open this up for ease of entry. This is part of what I spend, like I say, literally hours trying to imagine and try to contemplate how it would have been done. One thing I have to keep in my mind is um, these mud wagons were far less expensive than what we know as the Wells Fargo's type coach. They were very elaborate, very expensive to build. These, I've heard different people say that they cost about a third the expense. So generally the ones I've looked at and the ones many of you have looked at are very straight sided, very blocky, very plain, generally have canvas upholstery, canvas top instead of leather. You know, they're just a scaled down, much less expensive version. So this is another thing that I have to keep in my mind too. I want to maybe make it nicer than it should be. I have to remember that it is plain utilitarian mode of transportation. So I keep that part in my mind as well. Anyway, this is part of the process of now going into an area of trying to imagine how this was done, the seats, the top, when there was nothing there at all. We have a little bit of remnant in these two irons that went up, but that's it. So anyway, appreciate you following along. I do appreciate you watching.